Hello viewers, welcome back to the EK Expo Day 2. Today, today we have a panel where we'll be talking about uh, liquid cooling, technology, transistors and, and, uh, and such. I would like to present uh, Rock Dolinar. He is one of our lead uh, R&D designers, the engine, engine, engineers. And, uh, and I would also like to introduce Urban who is the uh, head of our R&D department. So we will, we, we will hit, hit off a, a few discussions, but we will also read your comments and feedbacks. But first, let's, uh, let's let Rock and Urban introduce themselves because you already know me and Eddie from yesterday. Thank you. I'm Urban Kolman. Uh, my background is automotive. As a system developer, I was dealing with uh, headlamps in car industry. I was dealing with uh, huge players. And the same strategy we live here with laser focus on big customers, big players. We are calling them silicon players. And as a head of R&D and head of innovation, we are pushing boundaries further and even beyond. Okay, hi, I'm Rook. Uh, I'm here at TK six, six and a half years. Uh, I came directly for facu from Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, I studied uh, heat transfer in micro channels and uh, looks like I convinced Teddy with that. So he gave me a job. Uh, I didn't know much about computers then. Uh, but uh, I was constantly searching, evolving, teaching. Uh, Eddie helped me a lot, and the guys also. So here I am, I am now working as lead R&D engineer. Uh, last year at uh, on enterprise project, so uh, that's where, where I am now. So let us hit off with our first topic, which we want to talk about, and it is are chips actually getting hotter because there, there is a uh, saying that uh, that uh, that future future chips will become so effective that uh, that uh, cooling won't be necessary. So we will be also looking at some charts, history, uh, how did the chips develop, and where are we now? So, gentlemen, please hit it off. What do you think? Are chips getting hotter, or where are we? Okay, I think definitely hotter. That's why we are here. But uh, if you look at uh, the history, uh, the number of uh, transistors is getting uh, higher and higher. They are getting smaller and smaller and more efficient. But uh, if you look at the uh, number of transistors, we have, uh, I don't know about the exact number, but it cannot cope with, uh, let's say, the electrical uh, efficiency and heat load. So. The heat load is constantly getting uh, larger and larger, larger uh, and more dense. So uh, I think uh, if you look at all the charts and uh, Moore's law, the number of transistors won't get any smaller. So uh, I think we have a good chance of uh, keeping up the, uh, the uh, let's say, trend of get the chips getting hotter and hotter. So. And also, it is not only that the chips are getting hotter, it is the heat density which is becoming the bigger problem these days and, and, and actually pulling all of that heat off of the chip that's smaller and more dense. Urban, would you care to comment something on this? Of course. Thanks, Attila. Welcome. Uh, we do believe that uh, air cooling is or and will not be sufficient anymore or will be sufficient for short period of time. We do believe that Moore's law is still alive. We cannot predict for how long, but currently it is. And uh, a scene we will have to push uh, liquid cooling uh, in more focused industry, also car industry. We have now autonomous driving uh, where we'll have to take care also about reliability, fail safe and so on. We have a feedback from our viewers that they say that Moore's, Moore's law 
is not valid anymore because of too much heat that, that is generated. So, Eddie, what do you think? Well, uh, I will not say uh, <coughs> if it's still alive or dead, but I would just say that it is fascinating how long this thing has been proven that it's, it's right. So uh, that's, the, that's the most fascinating thing. And uh, if I look at the beginnings, basically how I started is that uh, from the first PC that I bought, the gaming PC that I bought, and that's why this is basically the Reason. The reason why we are all here is that uh, I got a CPU and GPU and they were overheating. And I got the best copper solution, copper air cooling solution. And I was looking what's, what's more, they're on the market. And I saw that liquid cooling exists. And so I was, I was happy, I was happy, to, uh, lucky uh, that I was able to do uh, some prototypes on CNC machining, on CNC machines. And uh, these things took off uh, to where we are now. Yeah, it's, now it is quite big. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be moving on to our second topic, and that is the limits of, uh, <coughs> limits of, limits of air cooling. And, and we will also look at some charts ab about uh, uh, CPUs and GPUs, how did they develop during the past few years. Yes, yeah, I hope that uh, our, uh, our guys, uh, support guys, will put on the G GeForce history. This is a 10 years uh, of uh, GeForce uh, TDP, thermal design power, how much the air cooler has to cool. And you can see that there is a, uh, a limit to 250 watts. And this all says that, that <coughs> showing practically that uh, that the limit is there. So everything that goes over 300, so for example, if we go uh, to the next with, uh, with radions, um, we can see that, uh, and uh, the, the guys probably that are watching here knows that, that radions are normally a bit louder, and that, that is because they are a bit more, that's a bit more heat that needs to be taken from the chips, and uh, by doing that, uh, because of the air cooling is so on the limit, um, the fans have to speed, uh, have to have to have to do more job. So that's why it's more, it's louder. So um, we don't know what the next Radeon will be. Uh, Radeon, uh, the last Radeon uh, 5700 XT is not uh, uh, that high performance. So this this is what we can take off from this uh, uh, from this chart, but. Uh, Definitely, definitely, this is showing that the limit is there, and we know that. No, so. Since you mentioned how did you start, we had actually received a question. Did EK start off by, 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 by liquid cooling supercomputers, or was <laughs> it something else? It was totally something else. It, it was a hobby level for, for, for the first time, and Eddie can maybe tell more about the first blocks and how did he make them? Uh, so, yeah, so it was like, uh, it was like, a, it was, everything started as a hobby. Uh, and me looking at what uh, I can do, what I can improve, and I saw that I was, uh, I, I was in love with computers already back then. Uh, and uh, it just, it just happened uh, that that this came together, that I was working in a company that was able to get hands on CNC machining. And it was like immediately a couple of prototypes and showing that on the forums uh, and basically becoming pretty soon the, the, the most perfect, the, the number one company in the liquid cooling and the most professional. And this is what we did because we were passionate. Um, we had the number one support. We stood by our products always. Um, uh, so, so what do you say? Uh, then the performance, of course, yeah, performance, uh, quality, Design. support. Uh, uh, this is how it's done. Also, customer orientation is important yeah, definitely. here. Yeah. We do hear every single customer, which comes back to us, or with every single request or demand, and we respond promptly. Yeah. And by this, we are known as a world uh, player number yeah. one, I think. Yeah, so th this is why we are the go-to company for liquid cooling of mm -hmm. anything. 
uh, we can go back to our, our charts now and uh, look at the Intel i, I, i7 series CPU's history of the uh, yeah, TDP, so which has been debated quite a few times. Is it, is it real? Uh, some of the famous YouTubers also did a topic on this. I think Steve uh, 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 Gamers Nexus yeah. did a uh, coverage on this. So what do we say about the uh, in this TDP chart? What do you think? Uh, so this is uh, Intel i7-700 series. So basically the same level of the i7 throughout the generations. And we can see that, uh, uh, that the TDP has been increasing, uh, sometimes a couple of years slower, but now it's, being, uh, it's, it's uh, increased uh, significantly. Uh, but if we go to the next slide, when we, we know that the, the TDP of the Intel CPUs is not uh, same as other vendors are saying, are explaining that, are showing that, like AMD or, or NVIDIA. Uh, the next slide, um, you can see when, when, you when you enable turbo power usage on all cores, you can see that how, how the, the TDP has been increasing. So a uh, couple of years ago, 2017, it was 100 watts, but now it's 250. Yep. So this is something that it's, it's crying for, uh, screaming for liquid cooling, yeah. so that you can, that they can, that the user can use maximum performance at all times, and always, on all cores, turbo boost. And this is only achieved by liquid yeah. cooling. So some are, some are also adding more uh, chips to the die. Yeah. AMD did this. This was a uh, bri brilliant. brilliant idea. Yeah, and, uh, and, and their first chip was, I think, 180 watts, and now the latest is 250 or something like that. So obviously, answer to our first question, are, are chips getting hotter? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. So I would also add uh, that if they cannot, if they will not be able to, to make it denser, they will just add more chips, like AMD is doing mm -hmm. with their brilliant idea. Uh, so it's like, or, or make the course bigger and everything. So uh, this will go on, Quite. yeah, for Actually, for some for, time, definitely. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. And also the uh, benefit benefit towards air cooling is, if you have many chips, you can really uh, you can really route the liquid Target, yeah. directly yeah. over the chips and cool them really more efficient because with air cooling you're limited to uh, heat pipe yeah, heat and, and yeah. pins. And yeah. pins yeah. We have a question from a viewer about the liquid, liquid uh, devil. He is asking how, how, how did that happen exactly? So I think the Rock will tell that because he was the one who was very much involved in this. So. Yeah. Uh, the guys from uh, Tool con contacted us from Parkolor and uh, had a really uh, wild ideas about the design. Uh, they weren't so much into the thermal side of the water of the uh, water block, but uh, in later because phases, that's our part, yeah. because that's our part, yeah. they trusted us. It was yeah. more or more or less a pilot project uh, for them. If we can do it, so the timelines were really tight. Uh, but we managed to get everything together. Uh, they were really super cooperative uh, and also we had a bit of a luck because we got uh, GPU in later, in last phases of water block design. So um, we did it in, in first try. First uh, strike. First try, so. First try, yeah. yeah. Uh, we first made run. a water block that fitted perfectly in, uh, in first try, yes, and mm -hmm. yeah. that made I think that made the project uh, successful because uh, time to market is really important thing for us, um, and also we pulled out uh, almost everything uh, that they wished for. So uh, if you look at design, so we were both uh, really happy. Yeah. So uh, you, you remember that we basically Power Cooler was the first company that made that we made together. Yes. 
Yeah, so it was uh, Radeon uh, 4700 something, mm. 477, yeah, something like this, mm. yeah. So basically it just, it just, uh, it was just uh, 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 idea uh, that, 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 uh, that was born in their, uh, in their, uh, one of their departments and it just got pulled and uh, we're really happy to work with Powercore. So a, a, a sub, sub uh, uh, question to this, are, are we planning to do similar projects? Well, of course we are. We have made the Seahawk and who knows what will happen with the Seahawk, wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yes, expect similar products from us. We are, we are uh, wor working with more and more big uh, companies at this moment maybe. Urban can say a few yes, words. We have more and more similar projects. We really tight, tight timeline, time schedule is awfully tight. And for now we are successful. And although we have plenty of projects, we are also pushing boundaries uh, with uh, performance uh, over known limits. And we are now evolving uh, frontiers. Uh, we have to show as a professionals what is possible. Yeah. Uh, Asus also had a teaser a, a few weeks back. If you would search their uh, Instagram page, you will maybe find something interesting there. And, and uh, that is all that we will disclose right now. You can find their teaser. That's it. And we will be moving on to the next point of our panel discussion. And those are servers and the problems of, of the heat density. So because Rock is an engineer here. So uh, we all know the uh, surface area in uh, uh, server farms costs money. So if we make it denser, we save money and get more power out of them. But uh, the problem is air cooling or existing solutions are not compact. So we are really step by step, we are uh, entering uh, server world. So uh, basically the wish is to, to put as much hardware inside one, one new rack. So maybe if you look at this, this is one step towards it. Um, and uh, there are many other tasks as making custom manifolds, uh, uh, searching for QDCs, uh, uh, server world is very demanding, uh, so the steps are really well taught, um, and we uh, are, are in contact with some uh, really, uh, let's say, uh, high uh, players in this branch, so uh, they are demanding a lot, but we are somehow following for now. Uh, and no RGB. And no RGB, yes, well. which is yeah. easier, right? <laughs> which is Maybe easier. Maybe a question here uh, for viewers. What can we do with that excessive heat which is transferred out of the server racks? And from R&D and innovation department, uh, we can give you information that we are working on that topic, uh, solving with small and reliable steps. Uh, we have few different solutions which are tailored uh, to customer demands. Yeah, the problem in server world is that it has to be tested, it has to be fail safe and everything. So we're adopting different technologies uh, for making uh, water blocks and all the other equipment. So ideally we deliver hermetically closed system uh, all welded together. So basically there's, there's no chance of leaking inside the rack. Uh, the idea is to have uh, like that uh, fluid distribution unit mm -hmm. outside which can be maintained and everything and also uh, we are really um, really working hard on um, giving different possibilities how to use that uh, excessive heat uh, but it's a bit hard because of the uh, let's say uh, governments and all the limitations uh, but uh, for now we have about two projects on which we are really uh, looking uh, looking forward to and um, I think gates are opening slowly 
Uh, yes, we were working already for some with a couple of product projects. So one of the one of the projects was using uh, the GPU, the server uh, the GPU farm, and uh, heating using the excessive heat uh, to heat the the water. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's many more options. I mean, uh, what's also good uh, in water uh, apart from apart from air, air conditioning, is that you don't need hot aisles, you don't need uh, 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 sub-aisles, uh, hot, cold, cold aisles. Uh, you can just take the heat that is where it is, it is, um, where it is no made. Conversion. Yeah, you just take it out and you take it wherever you want. You can take it on the roof and you can dispose of it with, uh, with any, any technology, but you don't need in the, you don't need that big rooms uh, server rooms, you don't need uh, that big space. For example, think about uh, Singapore. Singapore, the, the square meter is is enormous and it's getting up and up. And, and Singapore is one of the good um, examples with their green initiative, uh, of the green server initiative. So uh, that's really uh, one of the best examples uh, what we see. And we are also looking uh, in that direction that uh, we can cover two challenges at the same time. One is uh, cooling farms or servers, and on the other hand, uh, providing fresh water. Mm. Uh, so we have uh, one silent project uh, where we are studying desalination topics, how it can be done, how we can achieve that. Of course, price performance has to match and we have to convince every single customer where is benefit for all, for every single one of us. Before we move on to the next topic, we had a question about the VTX pump. So, so the question is, will, will, will EK be releasing the standalone pump and when? Oh, that's a good question. Um, basically, depends if we get loads of emails and requests that uh, they want it. We can do that. For now, we don't see that need uh, because what the pumps that we are selling uh, are reliable, and uh, this is uh, this is it's not. Uh, we don't see that uh, need so far. But I so will, we will not say no, but never. But so for now, no. So people, if you like the VTX combos, email us, and then we will make sure that we will release this standalone pump as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the next topic that we want to talk about is the use of cooling in modern cars because self-driving cars is a very hot topic these days. A lot of uh, hardware is inside the car. It is uh, huge amounts of data being processed every second and mostly it is done by uh, graphic cards because graphic cards have have a huge bandwidth that uh, that uh, they can process data and of course they need cooling so let me just add one thing uh, when we're talking about cars it's more like thermal balance balancing exactly it's not uh, imagine minus 20 Celsius and it's uh, it's something that basically you have to heat up the system to run optimally. So mm. we understand that, and uh, we call this thermal balancing. Balancing, and uh, this is uh, one of the. Uh, I also said yesterday one of the most demanding uh, projects: how to do uh, mm. um, solutions for autonomous vehicles. Um, now uh, we tackle that problem. Problem with. Uh, our own laboratory, uh, our own, uh, let's say we have simulation software. Yeah. Uh, so we can really balance the whole system, let's say uh, balance the flow, uh, the heat discharge and everything. We can, uh, uh, we can really make the optimum solution for a certain, uh, let's say, computer or GPU or which we are cooling. Uh, we all know that uh, computers in s autonomous cars will have to be compact as possible, that means a lot of heat load on small surface, so 
again, air cooling here is not a, even an option because of the, the, let's say, noise and everything. Um, uh, also, we are, we are making uh, some projects uh, with uh, how to avoid the boundary of, uh, let's say, outside air. Uh, the ambient, temperature. Ambient, ambient temperature, so sub ambient cooling and mm -hmm. stuff like that is also considered here. Uh, but here, uh, the reliability and uh, power, usi power usage uh, has to be spot on uh, to so that we can be interesting for for uh, companies that will produce autonomous vehicles. We also understand uh, what is uh, the, the re reliability is the most important exactly. in the car in, this, in the car industry and streamlining and, and this is why we know uh, we know how to do that both the reliability and the streamlining and uh, EK is some is uh, known we can do this uh, from uh, we can only develop a product and then uh, uh, engineering, uh, more like engineering, or we can also manufacture and assemble it. We have us, uh, assembly, we have production options also in uh, cost-effective countries. Um, and um, with, uh, with uh, access to the laboratories uh, and equipment uh, to test and make these things really reliable. It's and one, thing, one more thing is also that to make like uh, minimum possible joints in the system mm -hmm. yeah uh, exactly it is it is very different to make a gpu water block which is uh, flexi top rgb in it and to make a block which would last for 20 years because modern cars can be used and run for 20 years so th this is a very challenging thing and we have also uh, uh, researched and uh, made new ways how do we produce water blocks so that we can also mass produce them? Do you, Rock, maybe want to uh, share something yeah. about these? Uh, we had uh, quite some experience with uh, making cooling uh, for uh, in development phases. Uh, so it's a totally different thing if you want to take that and uh, make cooling for uh, mass production. So those are totally different things and uh, the different technologies, different uh, and prices, if we if we want to say that, then uh, of course reliability. When they install something in uh, mass production, it must be really uh, fail safe. No no exposed gaskets or something like that. Just seal everything, weld everything, and uh, it requires tooling and stuff like that. So it's a to totally different uh, approach if you look at R and D process. Totally different animal, yes. Uh, since we mentioned RGB, we have a question. How does RGB make enge engineering the block harder? And uh, this is something where uh, me and Eddie agree. And, uh, and, and you can also s so see this on like, all of our latest products that you can't really see all of the strips. Uh, slapping, slapping a strip in, inside a block is very easy. But, but if you see all of the hotspots, and uh, it is not all that nice. So this, th this is why we are ta taking so much time into making the RGB implementation nice. Maybe Eddie can talk about the uh, flow meter that we will show soon, uh, be be because we also wanted to have RGB in there and also to make it look nice. Yeah, so not only let's, let's uh Let's let take a, all of the RGB implementation, RGB stuff, RGB of of things, right? In the liquid cooling, um, we, like you said, it's easy to to slap on the RGB uh, strip, uh, but it's it's not easy to implement it. Uh, so it basically it looks like part of the product, yeah. and that's why we are investing not just a lot of time but a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of material and production time into our products so this is also uh, this is basically my my uh, my passion about uh, the, the liquid cooling and design so it it's it's not just uh, it's not it doesn't look like a half yeah. product it's yeah. it's a complete 
So this is this is what what I hope I'm sure that it's seen in our, on our products. Uh, so touching the um, uh, the the new flow indicators, uh, this is also really something that will uh, add uh, a, a nice a nice feature to your to your loop. So uh, as soon as soon as uh, the um, as soon as we get one that I can grab, I will grab one definitely. <laughs> so stay with us until Saturday, and you will be seeing more about our flow indicators and, and how did we implement RGB into them. Uh, sticking to our main topic, we can go back to uh, heat and we will touch on telecommunication. So uh, telecommunication hardware is also gen generating a lot of heat. The, 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 the uh, five, 5G G was a very hot topic lately also. So what can we tell, tell, tell about the hardware that, that is used inside telecommunications? Yeah, 5G is a hot topic from either side. Yeah. Uh, we know the technology, we are aware of, uh, we are looking in that direction how to have really high efficiency on cooling systems like base antennas for 5G. Uh, power consumption is huge and we have to look also from environmental side, uh, not uh, heating the air, but transforming heat into something else. Be useful. Which can be used afterwards. Uh, but first we have to see what the real output regarding 5G will be. We know that uh, currently some antennas are on and bottom line is we are ready. So I will just add that basically this is one just one of the example of the industries that liquid cooling could be used. So from the LED controllers uh, to, to network switches who are also heating up, uh, to 5G switches uh, and everything. So this is just one of the areas where liquid cooling is needed. So like in the car industry, the cars were air-cooled air -cooled, and now they're, all, they're only liquid-cooled. Um, this is also how we see the transition, not only into the, in the industries, but also in uh, in the PC liquid cooling. Yeah. And also, I think, medical. Yeah, that's It's really similar. Yeah, but if you look at the desktop and workstations, we dissipate heat into the air. But if we have higher heat loads, we can really use that uh, heat and make it, uh, use it for something else. Let's say district heating, cooling, blah, blah, blah. And that's what we are not forgetting about. We are constantly putting focus on it. Uh, and I think it will be in next few years our main, uh, our main topic to talk about also. So uh, we are expanding, it isn't that right? Yeah. So any, any, any industry that has problems with, uh, uh, with overheating, liquid cooling is something that, that will solve the problem. It's and EK is the go-to. Yeah. Uh, we have also can mention graphene maybe. So will, uh, what will be the role of, of, of graphene inside cooling? Do you see a, 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 a future for graphene? And also, Rock, maybe you can tell, tell something more about what's graphene and, and why would it be more interesting for uh, cooling? Uh, graphene itself has a lot of potential for now, it's a bit tricky how to put it in the right uh, form, but uh, it has really uh, high heat uh, conductivities recorded. Uh, we are still investigating on that. We have a few partners which could uh, eventually make a sample of cold plate for us so we can test it. Uh, but the main principle is that uh, that higher uh, heat conductivity, we can take the heat and put it somewhere else faster. Uh, 
and according to um, uh, the topic that Urban opened today on the meeting that we had, uh, it's also combined with uh, graphite and uh, copper. The combination of two metals or maybe some else uh, can give really good results. Uh, we are, let's say, an innovation team is working really hard to get the materials, to get, uh, to get testing data and so that we can have a good insight where to go, not just in one year, but in 10 years also. But there will be one step in between, I guess, or I do believe uh, first composites will be available on the market, which will surpass uh, copper, and we are in contact with institutes uh, which are developing those composites. And so far, it's looking good. Uh, yes. yes, I want to say something, basically. So when we're discussing this uh, graphene and uh, some other new materials, I've, I play devil's advocate here. So I, I, I always give an example. You have aluminum, you have copper, and for example, silver, which is also which is one of the uh, best conductors, one of the um, accessible metals right now. Okay, so so if we compare, uh, if you make uh, a similar or the same cold plates from these three materials, you will see that the aluminum uh, is uh, maybe a couple of degrees uh, higher temperature. That's a couple of degrees, which, which does not hurt, basically, the experience of cooling. Uh, but if you go to, uh, towards, uh, and, and how much the um, aluminum is? Uh, I think it's 150. It's about half, is that about yeah, half, half the half of thermal, thermal, thermal conductivity is at 50% of copper. But when we go from copper to silver, uh, the price of the material gets like 100 times higher, mm -hmm. and uh, when you measure the differences in the cooling, it's a margin of error. So uh, if you go to uh, another material who is like twice as uh, uh, conductive as copper, if, we, if I look at the, at the aluminum, I just say, okay, so it's a couple of degrees. So uh, we are looking to this, but also looking to this, what, uh, what makes sense? So we know that our car industry is aluminum. It's lightweight. Uh, it's it's uh, total. It's it's, it's uh, you can uh, you can process it. You can manufacture Plastic. it. You can you can uh, stem. Uh, yeah. Stem uh, mold. Can, exactly. So, um, so this is this is one of the material that I really like. So maybe we can start talking about diamond coat plate at this point. Oh yeah, diamond. Just yeah. one piece for testing. Yes. <laughs> Actually, this was a very, very hot topic when we launched the Fluid, uh, fluid uh, Gaming line, which was made of, made of aluminum and all of these comments came in that, that, that it is half the, half the performance as uh, copper, but actually the, the uh, biggest challenge is, is, is like e extracting the heat from the uh, from the silicon chip itself, that is the biggest bottleneck, and this is also why uh, why we are using aluminum inside of our fluid gaming PCs and also the upcoming fluid works PCs. And maybe Rock can tell us more about the upcoming fluid works PCs and how do we work with aluminum inside these. Yeah, as Attila said, we chosen uh, aluminum uh, over copper. In these cases, uh, there were many reasons. Uh, we tested both. Uh, found a bit, uh, it was a bit worse performer, but not so much that it would uh, affect, uh, let's say, lifespan, lifespan of uh, hardware, so that it would affect, uh, let's say, uh, uh, performance so much that it will start thermal throttling uh, with aluminum. We achieved great results. Uh, it is easier to, let's say, parts are easier to produce. Uh, also, the price is better with aluminum. Uh, so we found the whole package more reliable. And the weight? 
the weight also, the, the end product is quite heavy. Okay, let's leave it, but... It is heavy, but still, uh, uh, it's much lighter. Yeah, the, uh, you can save a couple the, of kilos. Yeah, there's, uh, there's less uh, stress on uh, hardware, because if we put GPU and water block together uh, and stack them, let's say, like we are doing uh, with seven, seven GPUs, it makes a difference. Uh, we also implemented like uh, GPU supports and everything to be 100% safe. Uh, so uh, about fluid works, we'll be talking tomorrow. Mm. Uh, so I can tell you more about that. Yeah. Then stick around again. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question about uh, aluminum. Would a bigger fin array from 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 like aluminum make up the uh, difference between copper and aluminum. So if we would put more fins in it, would it equal out with performance? Uh, I think with uh, higher pumping power, more flow through the fins, uh, we can achieve same temperatures, but uh, the pressure drop will increase. Uh, so if you put in serial more water blocks, uh, the temperatures, uh, the flow will drop uh, so much that probably the temperatures will be higher again. So uh, we can do it, uh, but the main thing we are looking for here is uh, balance. So uh, we have, let's say we take existing pump, read characteristics, uh, and try to balance whole system. Uh, I would add one thing, <coughs> which is also a common sense uh, uh, that we use when we are designing our products. Uh, for example, CPU and GPU water blocks, we could make them better, cool, to cool them we, we can make them to cool better, but uh, that would uh, basically uh, ruin, the balance. ruin the balance of flow and the pump, uh, 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 how pump is, uh, is uh, uh, the load on the pumps, you know, the pumps would be overloaded and the pumps could fail. Uh, so we, what we're using is a common sense, what makes sense to what level so we can, so it's a high flow uh, and, ma and maximum performance mm -hmm. at, that, at that flow and that condition. So I would add on that, uh, if we can make aluminum, I would say that um, if we would make it, if we could make it with, uh, with bigger size, better perform, of course, uh, to, a, to a certain level, but uh, if, if you go, if you look at the normal, uh, normal sizes, normal, normal operation, uh, normal operational sizes, not too, too huge, um, we would do it with copper already if this was, would increase performance. Yeah. So I would say the, the answer is no, but it's not black and white, you know, so yeah. it's, it's, it's somewhere in between, but uh, no. Uh, yes, because it is it is very complicated because it all depends on the size of the chip. So if you have a small chip, and if you add more fins to the side, you you might actually lose thermal performance by this. So it's, it it is very uh, delicate and uh, and it has to be tested and checked uh, what works the best. And th that's why we have all our system designed for optimal working point. Okay. And this is simulated, tested. Uh, we have two labs. Uh, we test usually products in both labs, so in dependency. And with that, we have a confirmation that we are in direct spot of the optimal, optimal performance. We have been talking a lot about aluminum, and uh, people are asking, will we support the aluminum product line? Uh, Eddie, will 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 you take this or should 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 I take this one? I think you've already mentioned it yesterday. Yes, yes, I did. So um, we promised the next generation of uh, the new hardware. We will support it with the uh, water blocks, uh, and we will also support the expandability of your existing systems. Uh, but for those who would like to switch to copper at some level, we will have something also prepared for you. So it's an easier switch for you, um, but that um, we can stay with us yes. and uh, you'll see that we, you're not left uh, behind. So 
Yeah. Basically, aluminum won't be leaving our shop. It will be just shifting to the uh, other other uh, product lines. Uh, Rock can maybe tell more 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 about this. So we will be expanding our shop with uh, the uh, professional line products, and we will be offering aluminum parts there. Yeah, well, we are making like whole professional portfolio and slowly releasing it. Uh, you can see in our shop, we have already a few uh, water blocks, uh, QDCs, tubing, uh, and stuff like and manifolds. Um, so basically, we're building up the portfolio. Uh, we have also uh, aluminum water blocks prepared. Uh, as far as we look at it, it will be a totally different design. Uh, if we look at quantum, there will be no RGB. Yeah. Um, and uh, we plan to have it all, let's say, uh, fittings, extenders, but in different design, not quantum design, not classic design, but professional design. Uh, this, for this is for professional users mainly, yeah. no? So designed for reliability and, let's yeah. say, technical use. Yeah. We have a few interesting questions. This one is about more the mainstream stuff. Will we ever get black nickel water blocks? Because currently we are only doing uh, ordinary nickel. So can we expect black nickel water blocks? Uh, we've done already some prototypes with black nickel. So the, the thing is that uh, the ne black nickel process is very demanding. And applying black nickel to a, a huge surface is and, and is uh, is a huge challenge for our suppliers, and so far because of the, because on every product we are putting EK batch, um, we found that the 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 color differentiation and the the the, the surface finish was not quality enough for us to to offer this, but we are looking at other colors too. So. Uh, we are definitely looking to, to, to get you something, but uh, right now we don't have anything ready to offer. We have another interesting question. I may physic myself, and Urban is very good with physics. We need to solve the Navier stock existence for the flow. Will this help liquid cooling? I think it's the uh, boundary separation bit. bit Bit, 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 bit between the fluid and the uh, wall, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, depends on the thickness of the wall, uh, the laminar, the laminar, laminar layer, layer so. turbulence, and so on, orientation, uh, and. Uh, but but, we have much more in our in our heads about this, but we. We cannot share with you just yet. So, uh, but but do you do you do you think that uh, physics is a this physics is a is a limiting factor for for liquid cooling per liquid cooling performance? Yeah, for sure, physics is limiting factor <laughs> for everything. <laughs> yeah. that, that's why we are pushing, yeah. and we are working on that to find different solutions. If we stuck. On one point, we immediately have a sharp focus on other technology or principle. That's why we can evolve pretty fast. Another question from the viewers. Is EK a global company? The answer is yes. Uh, EK is, is a global company. Uh, we have headquarters in Slovenia, of course, here where we are now. Uh, we have a company uh, in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and uh, from wh where we are making uh, these beautiful fluid gaming pieces. Um, what I can say is that I'm really happy. It's a, it's a great success for us. Um, and um, we also have a, a Chinese um, company, uh, so which is helping us to to get to China, to get products to China, from China to China, uh, uh, cost effective, so we don't uh, ship twice uh, before getting products back to China. Um, did I miss 
uh, something? Basically, I think that you wanted to say that we are a very agile global mm. company. Yes. Mm. Uh, you can find our, our products in uh, 130 countries around the globe, something like that. So we are quite present around the globe. Uh, uh, we have a question about job opportunities. What can we say about job opportunities? We have said, said that we are a international company. We said that we are a global company. If someone is interested in working for EK, would it be possible and, uh, and how should they get in touch with us? Of course, there is a link on our EK page. Ping us, we'll respond, it's, then we'll see. Yeah. We just received a, a very interesting question. Uh, so, CNC machine, cold place, or Skype? Why we are using uh, CNC machine fins on, on, on all of our, our blocks, and why aren't we switching to Skype? Uh, okay, so uh, the theory behind uh, tells us that Skype bases should be more efficient because of higher heat transfer surface. But in practice, we've also tested many options, and uh, Skype base uh, at first have good performance and everything. But uh, if you look at longer, uh, longer periods of time, uh, there are small particles in such fluid and they tend to clog the channels uh, in Skype bases. So we, I think we found the, the right width of the channel, uh, channel to fin ratio, uh, so that with efficiency and uh, flow, uh, flow conditions inside our systems, we are uh, basically better than Skype base at start and in long term, long -term also. Uh, from, from my point of view, it's also what does a customer say when they, when he gets into in, in his hands what our product? Um, I'm not saying that uh, skiving is bad, but uh, when a customer gets our product in hands and they see the effort we've put into this, and with with our price tag, uh, it makes sense. Uh, but if you put if you put the the price tag the same price tag on a Skype product, it just doesn't sound right to me. So that's, uh, that's, that's my opinion we also, on Skyving. We also have examples of water blocks which are using Skyved uh, cold plates. And if you check all the uh, re reviews online, you will see that there is no difference in, uh, in, in the actual performance sometimes normal CNC machined fins are even more effective. Yeah. So if I go back to, I, I, I knew I forgot something. We are a global company. We also have office in Silicon Valley. So, so for all the um, companies in the Silicon Valley and Bay Area, uh, we have a team there to support you with, any, with, with your problems, with your we have a technical team there, we have a marketing team there, we have a, a, a other support team there, so we are, yeah, so we're a global com uh, company. So while we are talking about EK as a, as a global, global company itself, uh, why would we recommend someone choosing EK? What do you think that makes us special? How many years of experience do we have? We have more than 15 years of active experience, started with Eddie. Basically, he started from hobby to professional number one uh, world leader liquid cooling company. For us, uh, qu uh, quality and reliability are on the first place. So with, uh, of course, I started 15 years ago. But uh, 15 years ago is not uh, all, all, everything that we have. We have uh, team members here, from, uh, from young, uh, young members to, to skilled, uh, skilled uh, members that came from the uh, car industries. Uh, we know we, we have much more than 15 years uh, of the experience. Uh, so uh, I would say that 
Uh, we are the go-to companies for many companies uh, already uh, that you can see our products on the market. And also, uh, there is a, we're also working with the car industry. We've, we've talked a lot about it, but in the, by the end of this year, something uh, will very likely be already on the, mar on, on the, on the streets. <clears throat> something, many, many cars already driving on the streets uh, with our solutions. Uh, so uh, we are the one-stop shop for anyone who needs cooling. So this is why we are uh, we, we are the go-to company. All so, right. Yeah. Uh, I think that we'll be wrapping up soon, but we have a very uh, interesting question for the end. Uh, what will be the, the next innovation in liquid cooling? So I will just hit off with a few things that we saw several years ago. It it was a uh, pumpless AIO, which which would use uh, natural heat circulation, and it was brilliant and good. It it was a pumpless solution, but we n never seen the the uh, finished mass produced product. Also, we had seen uh, 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 last year. Uh, tech plates mm -hmm. inside uh, uh, cooling so that it would cool the liquid and like air cooler will would uh, would uh, cool the other side so we are seeing these innovations which are circling around a few times but we never see a final mainstream product so what do you think what will be the next if mainstream if we'll disclose all the innovations we have currently in our portfolio and which are alive, then they won't be innovation anymore. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll let you know when, it's, when, when, when it it's will ready. be ready, but uh, believe us, it will be ready. Yeah, and also with some, uh, some uh, let's say, goals, uh, some new technologies uh, fail, doesn't mean that they cannot be refined. So we are also looking in that direction. I think that we can slowly wrap it up here. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for all of the questions. We hope that you enjoyed our, our, our sweet tour video, which was aired just before this uh, live stream that we have now. And stay tuned for the next few days. Uh, we, we will every day we will have new materials until Saturday. Saturday is the last day. And after each aired video, we will also have a live stream where you can ask questions. So grab a pen, mark your uh, favorite things that you want to ask us, and we'll sure that we'll be answering them. Rock, Urban, Eddie, if you want to say any last words. Thank you for your patience and that you joined our short discussion we yeah. do believe it was fruitful yeah i hope you like everything uh, i can't wait to tell you something more about uh, fluid works tomorrow uh, we have a lot of things to show so stay tuned yeah thank you so much so tomorrow uh so the, the same time that we started today with uh, 360 tour i hope you found all five uh codes discount codes I think it was five, yeah. Yeah, so five discount code. So, so maybe somebody missed some code. It's really in the tricky uh, spot. So, find it. Yeah, find it. So, see you tomorrow for more. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye.